today we're talking about a lens that most people start with, a kit lens. Let's look at this. Hey, thanks for joining me this morning. Really pretty morning out. We've had a lot of rain and such for a few days. So it's nice to actually see the sun out and, and uh, a little windy out, but I think it'll be okay. So today I'm looking at a kit lens. This is the 14 to 42 millimeter Olympus. Um, I think it's officially the 14 to 42 F35 to F56 2R. And that's an important uh, distinction um, because there are earlier versions of this lens. So I'm gonna take a look at this lens and, and help you understand why I bought this one. Did not buy it with a camera, bought it separately and uh, what I use it for. But before we get started, if you would please click on the like and subscribe buttons and let's get started. So as I mentioned, I, uh, I did not buy this lens with a camera. I actually did buy an earlier copy of it, uh, one in chrome finish, uh, with an EPL-5 that came together. And I gifted that camera to my son, my youngest son, and, and um, decided, well, I should, you know, either replace it or get something different. And I decided actually to just replace it. And I bought this black version. Now, I bought it used, uh, got a really good deal on it. It was like $87. Um, I want to say from Robert's camera, but I don't remember who it was. Anyway, the, um, the reason I bought this though, as opposed to buying something more capable, more expensive, more whatever, is that I was really quite satisfied with the performance of this lens. Now, you know, there's a lot of kit lenses out there from Olympus, or I could have chosen a Panasonic. Um, but I like this one for several reasons. Number one, it's relatively compact. Now there is a pancake version of this lens that's much flatter, but when you think about what's gonna happen when you extend a very short lens out this far, you've got lots of little short sections that are kind of, you know, telescoping out of each other. Keeping those lens elements centered and in alignment, it's gonna be more of a problem. And as I led, read lens reviews uh, on these various lenses, the kit lenses, this one actually outperformed the pancake version in the test that I read. And I'll put a link to the description, you know, a link to the test that I read about this one. But it actually outperformed it and it outperformed the 12 to 50, which does have a wider range. But in, in this focal length range, this lens actually slightly outperformed it. So I, I decided to go ahead and go with this one. You know, for a really wide angle lens, I probably want a fixed focal length. That's, I'm just, I like fixed focal length lenses for wide angle lenses. They're uh, more compact, they're a little faster. And the uh, longer focal length is covered really by other lenses for me. I've got the, the 50 to, what is it, the 40 to 150 or 50 to 150, whatever it is, telephoto that I use for longer focal length. So I really, you know, I didn't really need the slightly longer focal length of the 12 to 50. And if I wanted a 12 millimeter lens, I probably would just buy a separate one. But anyway, so this one, you know, it had a, a pretty decent review. And like I say, there is an earlier version of this lens. Uh, if you're looking to buy one of these, make sure you get the one that ends with 2R. You can probably kind of see it there. The 2R version is, is an updated version. They increased the accuracy of the alignment of the elements so that they stay in alignment when it's, it's tele, you know, zoomed out. They also, um, improve the optical design. So this has eight elements in seven groups. So there's, there's one cemented pair and then the rest of the elements are individual. But here's what's really kind of interesting. Three of those elements are aspheric elements. Now, for those of you that are kind of newer to photography, you may not really understand what an aspheric element is or not understand how um, really kind of amazing that is. So if you go back in the history of photography, when I was you know, really active in photography in the 70s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, early 2000s, whatever, that span of time, aspheric elements had to pretty much be made manually, like one at a time, machined on a, not really a lathe, but they had to be turned or shaped um, pretty manually. There wasn't, <clears throat> I'm sure there was some automation, but they weren't able to make them in the quantities they were. And so lenses that had aspheric elements were expensive, really expensive. and you know, if a lens had aspheric elements, then it would be 
a real prominent feature of that lens. You would not see a lens with aspheric elements without them making a big, you know, amount of uh, noise about that in their advertisements for the lens. So this lens actually has three aspheric elements, and so that, that's a really a pretty amazing thing. Um, but the lens has performed really well. It's compact. It's fairly lightweight. It does have a plastic you know, lens mount, but in all honesty, I have not found that to be um, of, any, of any issue. Now, when we say plastic, let's talk about that too. You know, I used to repair cameras for a living, and I can tell you that the plastics in modern cameras and lenses is not the kind of plastic that are, you know, toys are made of and other cheap plastic things are made of. A lot of these plastics have um, metallic um, components or, you know, I guess you would say powder or there's metal mixed in with the plastic. Um, the polymers that they use for these is, is really high tech. And it's, it's not just your everyday plastic. I mean, today they make lots of things out of, I guess what you'd call polymer as opposed to the word plastic. Um, that are really, I mean, we just never dreamed of doing. I mean, no one ever thought that somebody would make a, say a, a, a receiver for a pistol or a handgun like the Glock out of plastic. I mean, that was, you know, go back to the 70s, that's unheard of. You know, like who would think to do that? Plastic is crap, you know, but today, polymers or plastics are much more advanced than they were. And so when you see a lens with a plastic lens on it, yes, that's a cost saving, you know, way of making the lens less expensive. But at the same time, it is also, um, it's a very workable design. It's, you know, assuming you don't drop the lens, it's probably, or the camera, it's probably never going to give you a problem. Uh, I suppose there maybe comes a point where you took the lens on and off enough times to create some wear you'd have to do a lot of lens changing to do that. And here's the other thing about that, and something we learned when polymer lens mounts were first introduced on cameras. What we found is if you have a lens that's got a metal lens mount, and you, let's say you drop the camera and the lens hits first, with a metal lens mount, it's likely to rip the lens mount off the camera body. I mean, and, and then that really damages the camera body. But with a polymer lens mount, if there's gonna be a breaking point, it's gonna be the back of the lens. And frankly, replacing the lens mount on the lens is probably going to be a lot less expensive than replacing the lens mount on the front of the camera, which is going to do a lot more damage if that were to happen. Now, that's an extreme thing. I and mean, we try not to drop our cameras. But should that happen, the saving grace there is, you know, it's probably going to be cheaper even, like on this lens, just cheaper to replace the lens than, you know, fix the camera body. So there is that saving grace. Anyway, this lens has performed quite well. 14 to 42 is a 28 to 84 millimeter equivalent. And it, um, you know, on a full frame camera and the performance I've had with this lens has been really quite good. I, um, like I say, I studied it quite a bit before I bought it and the images that I've taken with it have really borne out that it's a, it's a very decent lens. So let's do this. Um, like I say, I am gonna put a link to that lens test so you can read that in the description. But let's look at some pictures I've taken with this and see what you think and um, then we'll come back and um, see how that does.
Oh, there you go. I think you'll have to agree looking at the images from this that the uh, quality of the pictures that it delivers is really quite good. I use this not only for general photography, but also uh, have used it for copying negatives like you know, I shoot film cameras and I take the negatives. I've got a copy stand. I put this on with a light box, put the negatives on that and actually turn those negatives into digital images. And the image close up, the image plane is flat enough to do that. It works quite well. I copy 120 size and four by five um, negatives with it. Works quite well. So it's, it's, it is not a macro lens. It doesn't have a macro setting, but it does focus quite, quite close. And um, you can't call it a macro lens, obviously, but you definitely can shoot close ups with it. So it's a um, very versatile lens, lightweight, compact, 37 millimeter filter, uh, on the front of it, so that's not too uncommon these days. It's easy to get lens hoods and filters for it. And uh, like I say, it's been a joy to use. I hate, like I say, I, I chose this intentionally um, over the other lenses, and I, you know, for various reasons, and it has uh, really uh, performed quite well. And for my uses, I don't shoot professionally anymore, so I, I don't have a need for um, a more uh, expensive or higher quality lens. The quality that this delivers is is perfectly within my needs, and um, so it's been a real joy to use. If you end up, you know, looking for a kit lens, this is one I can definitely recommend. Or if you have one of these, you know, just know that you've got a, a very decent lens that'll perform quite well for you. I'll always appreciate you watching my videos. If you have any questions or thoughts, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.